lots of happiness regressions out there, lots of papers saying watching TV could affect your happiness, going to church could affect your happiness, religiosity. There's a plethora of variables. So one of the main things that we're going to try and figure out here is, are these variables robust to controlling for other variables? Right? So there's some famous economists out there, or econometricians, or perhaps all of us, who say if you really want to get something out of a variable, you run enough regressions, you're going to get it. Right? So if you want positive relationship, negative relationship, control properly and you're going to get that. And we are going to try and figure out how that can be avoided and are certain variables always strong versus not. The second thing we're going to do is kind of talk a little bit about choice of control. So when we run regressions, we always think of, okay, happiness. So age, age squared, marital status, uh, employment status, those are things we're going to include. So we're going to try and figure out the ones that we have been traditionally including, are those really the best ones? And are there new ones that we should be considering? So that's another we're going to get in the contribution of the paper. The last one, and I think two is a little bit more for future research, but kind of giving some suggestive evidence as to how the micro uh, determinants of well-being change as an economy develops. So what's important to somebody in Sub-Saharan Africa might not be very important well-being predictor for somebody in the U.S. So this is more of a the second part is more of an exploratory part of the paper. It's not perfect, but the hope is it's going to give people a reason to do some. Uh, explore some uh, new elements. So let's talk about extreme bound analysis for this technique. Yes. So say we have 53 test variables, which we do in this study, that we are going to test. And there's a bunch of standard variables which we are not testing. We're saying literature always uses them, so we are going to use them. We're not going to question them necessarily. So then what you do, you cannot add all 53 variables to the regression. In fact, if you did that for World Valley Survey, which is the data set we use, the number of observations where you have non-missing value would drop to zero. And I'm sure all of us have run regressions in our life where we wish we could have added variables, but when you do that, the sample size shrinks, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. So what we did, and this is very much in terms in, in line with what Sally Martin did, is we are going to take the control variable, the standard variable that everybody used, and use four of the test variables at a time. And we're going to look at every single combination of those four variables. Right, so this is this is why he ran a million regression. We probably ran two million regressions. So millions of regressions are being run. But the idea is we are running every possible you know, combination of those four variables. Now, some view this technique and say, "Oh, is this data mining?" Well, it could potentially be. It's similar to data mining. It does seem a lot like that. But these variables are not something we just chose out of the World Value Survey. There are actual papers written behind each one of them. So I have a table in the paper that says where did we get each one of these variables, variables from and why you should take them somewhat seriously. Okay, so that's how I would try to justify that. So each one of our regressions, when we run them, you have life satisfaction as your dependent variable, which asks, in general, how satisfied are you with your life these days. It's measured from 1 to 10, a 10 scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 being highs, you know, as happy as you can be, or as satisfied as you can be. We control for a bunch of uh, standard variables. You'll see that in the next slide. We have country year effects, so all kinds of year effects, country effects, fixed effects. So we do not want to study the fixed are the macro variables. So we are going to kind of take that part of the thing out. We cluster by country year. Every country is different. They have different cultures, different norms, different understanding. Uh, and then any regression where the number of uh, observation was less than 500, we drop that. Right? Uh, and the last thing we do is it's oftentimes a lot of these controls or a lot of these independent variables may be correlated with each other. And that makes it difficult to make sense of them. Uh, so what we did was we looked at the various inflation uh, factor and anything that was greater than four, we got rid of this. Where did we get this number of four? Yeah. The literature doesn't agree on any given number, but it seems like the numbers they look at are two, five, four, and ten. And a lot of people use the number ten, but we were being a little bit conservative, and so we used four. All right. Uh, <coughs> I could spend time on this, but given that we have ten minutes, I'm not going to spend time on this. Uh, but we do have, so this kind of goes to what, how you do the test of robustness. So once you run these millions of regressions, for each one of the variables, you have a whole bunch of coefficients. Okay, so the value of friendship. You ran the, that variable and appeared in one regression, in a second regression, in a third regression, in a fourth regression. In every regression that you ran, you got a coefficient estimate and a standard error estimate. So now you have a distribution of this coefficient estimate. And you can use that to run a few tests. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If you want to know more about it, we can definitely talk. 
one of this, yeah, I'm not gonna keep putting that, I'm gonna click this. All right, so we use the World Value Survey, where we have, uh, we use about 86 countries, data is from 1981 to 2008. Uh, we do not have panel data, panel data would have been great, this is full cool cross sections every year, it's a random group of people. The way we chose our standard variable, we didn't want to just say, hey, we think these are standard variables. We looked at, uh, we did a key search of happiness subject to well-being or life satisfaction on this uh, website, uh, for economists, we know this is EconLit, uh, which is very up-to-date in terms of articles. And then a whole bunch of papers came in. Uh, out of those papers, we looked for papers that ran these kind of life satisfaction regressions or happiness regressions. And then we looked at all the variables that they were controlling for or using as independent variables. Uh, we had to kind of keep it to a bunch of journal articles. We didn't kind of, for example, use Journal of Happiness Studies, which you know, has so many papers. I only have that many students who work for me on this project. So I had to kind of limit it to a bunch of articles, and we kind of went with uh, six of these. So AER, African Economic Review, Foreign Journal of Economics, Economic Theory, uh, Journal, uh, Journal of so Anyways, so there were these six. That's how we, six, how we chose. Uh, and these are the variables on the right which appear in this kind of frequency. So out of those 90 articles that we found, we took 37 of them that ran regressions, and then these are the frequencies. So age, income, consumption, gender, these we have to add, and they appear in pretty much every single paper that we saw. Uh, and all the way down to race, ethnicity. Uh, race and ethnicity we were not able to use, but when you look at the World Value Survey, and there's so many different ethnic groups all across the world, it's very difficult to make hundreds and thousands of dummy variables. It just kills the power of nutrition. So that's something we were not Low income countries, low middle income countries, upper middle income countries, high income countries. Okay. So this is World Bank's definition of kind of breaking down countries into different income groups. And the way to read this is, for example, the variable native born. Are you native born or not? Will that affect your subjective well-being? Well, if you were in the if you ran the regression pooling all the countries in the world, there is no X there, so it's not. It did, it did not come up to be robust. For the low income country, it did. Lower middle, upper middle, higher, higher income? Yes, it did. Right? So that's how you read this chart. This paper writing was difficult within like 1,200 words or something, or 1,000 words, and then presenting is also difficult at times. So, a few things that we found uh, for pool sample, if you do not make a differentiation between level of income, most variables turn out to be significant. Everything seems great, everything matters. At the very moment you start breaking it by countries, for low-income countries, only 35% of the variables that we look at matter. 47% okay? for middle-income, upper-middle-income, 53% high-income, 76%. So it seems like much of the result when you kind of combine all the data is driven by high-income countries. In fact, most of our studies, because when we did the literature, we are done in high-income countries, our list of variables is very much kind of tilted towards those variables. So hopefully if more studies are done in developing countries, we could have a better list of variables. Uh, all perception of control and personal economic variables matter. Demographic variables did not matter, but that does not mean demographic variables do not matter. All that means is we've done a good job of including them in our standard choice of variables. So whenever we run regression, we have age and all that. Those are actually important, so that's, that's kind of uh, Personality traits, social relationship, and these are more heterogeneous across types of countries. So they're very, they vary, so you have to be very careful. Uh, contiguity, this was an interesting result where we saw a variable kind of lighting up, becoming very important for low-income countries, and then being important all the way up to middle income, and then lighting down and not being important. So contiguity, across levels of development, there is enough suggestive evidence. Uh, and we have questions about standard versus what, what variable should be standard, so the paper has some suggestions. 